welcome i'm gitanshri and you're watching gmo media presents india's finest workplaces so today's episode comes to you from the beautiful gurugram headquarters of a tire giant that is consistently working to solidify its market leadership and produce world class products for its prestigious clients showcasing apollo tires founded in 1972 By late Sri Ronak Singh, Apollo Tyres started its operations with its first manufacturing plant at Pirambara in Kerala. With its first tyre rolling out in 1976, the company swiftly grew its portfolio in the commercial vehicle tyre manufacturing and became the leader in the segment in India by late 80s. As Indian automobile market grew, Apollo Tyres established the second manufacturing plant in 1991 in Gujarat. led by the great vision of shri onkar kanwar the company progressed across the years adapting modern technologies and acquiring companies as part of its growth strategies today apollo tires is now a global tire brand with multiple manufacturing units in india and one unit each in the netherlands and hungary the company markets its products under its two global brands apollo and fredestein and its products are available in over 100 countries through a vast network of branded exclusive and multi product outlets the product portfolio of the company includes the entire range of passenger car suv muv light truck truck bus two wheeler agriculture industrial specialty bicycle and off the road tires and retreading material and tires to be such a trusted name in the global auto industry for over 50 years it doesn't come easy it needs consistent efforts chasing excellence in everything from product innovation to effective team management while ensuring growth in stakeholder value the man leading this admirable legacy is neeraj kanwar a trailblazing leader mr kanwar is the vice chairman and managing director of apollo tires he has managed to turn around the company into one of the most recognizable auto brands in the world accelerating the company's turnover from 450 million dollars to around 3 billion dollars with his passionate vision for sustainability technology safety and ensuring positive global investor relations apollo tires is in for a bright future hello neeraj welcome to gmo media presents india's finest workplaces it's a pleasure to have you with us today thank you it's a pleasure thank you so let me first congratulate you on your glorious 50 years of success so tell us about your journey at apollo since its inception Well, I would say it's been a very adventurous uh, journey, as you know. The company was started in 1975. Um, my father took over the reins in 1976, and uh, at that point in time, the company was nearly bankrupt um, in in Kerala. We only had one plant in Kerala. We had a tie-up with an American tire company called General Tire, and the technology that they had given us was for the good for the American roads and not for Indian road. So at that point in time, Mr. Kanwar, my father, uh, was battled with this bankrupt company, and he had to really take on the challenge of turning it around. Um, in in the 70s, um, we also had a lot of loss, attrition of people, attrition of technology. So he brought a team around himself and gave the challenge to all of them to come out with products that were good for India. and uh, i guess at that point in time a lot of good team was created around him and uh, it was uh, and he never looked back it was a success story from then on and then on he went on to put up a plant in gujarat in baroda in the 90s and that really saw apollo uh, jump leap uh, in front of competition in india uh, so at that point we were still a truck tire company in the automotive industry apollo is proud to be sitting at a 3 billion dollar uh, global company so neeraj if we talk about your global r&d activities they've been one of the cornerstones of apollo's success so tell us more about that so like i mentioned to you we had a technical collaboration with uh, general tire then general tire was bought over by a german company called continental and then we um, went into a joint venture with michelin which only lasted 18 months um, in in india uh, in 2003 and then since 2004 uh, 
the biggest pillar that we said to ourselves when we didn't have any of the foreign collaborations that R&D and technology is something where we are going to invest heavily into. Today, I'm happy to say we have two R&D centers, uh, one in uh, in Chennai looking after Asia and one in Holland looking after Europe and the US. I'm happy to say we have 400 scientists, stroke engineers in these R&D centers. Uh, we are investing close to 3% of our uh, revenues go into R&D. All of these uh, R&D spends are going into bringing out the best products at a good price uh, so that it's a value for the customer. So Neeraj, IoT, AI and ML, it is certainly the future in optimizing manufacturing process to achieve further efficiency. So what all technological integrations are in place for Apollo's manufacturing facilities? Yeah, so you know, AI, ML, these are all new, uh, new words that have come out in the past two to three years. Uh, what during COVID we realized that Apollo was way down in digitalization of its uh, of the entire company. So we did hire a chief digital officer here in the UK. Uh, under him, now we've started a lot of projects on AI and machine learning. We have a tie with uh, the University of Glasgow where we are doing uh, running some PhD programs. We have two data innovation science hubs. One is in London and one is in uh, recently in Hyderabad, where basically uh, there are youngsters sitting in there doing a lot of data mining, uh, trying to understand equipments in uh, in the manufacturing uh, factories, and then learning machine learning and with the AI going into the plants to see how we can increase productivity. The other project that we've just finished in Europe is a supply chain end-to-end -end, uh, digitalization of the entire value chain. So becoming much more conscious of what the customer requires at the right time with the right SKU that he requires. So thereby we will also reduce our freight and logistics time to the customer. So therefore carbon fuel emissions from the truck is something which we are also concerned about. So that's where the sustainability angle comes in. Right, so as you just mentioned, sustainability is a way of business practice at Apollo. So what are some of the initiatives that are breaking horizons to achieve carbon neutrality in manufacturing? Today, any company wants to survive in the next 10 years, next decade, you have to get into your sustainable journey. It is very, very important, not only for us, but as global citizens, we have to look after the environment. We consciously have taken a target of becoming carbon neutral by 2050. We've taken a conscious decision of having uh, sustainable raw materials up to 30% by 2030. Okay, And then we've also taken renewable energy targets of achieving 25% renewable energy in our plants by 20, uh, FY26. So there are a lot of projects that are going in uh, that are now looking at how we can reuse water. Currently, we are using 38% of water consumed is reusable. We want to take that to 40 to 45%. Our Andhra plant today, I'm happy to say, is 100% using biomass. As far as tires are concerned, we have come out with tires which are low values in rolling resistance which again reduces the carbon footprint. So electrification is becoming the next big wave in the auto industry. So how is Apollo gearing up for it? Any special product offerings? Well, yes, on the product, we were the first company in Europe to come out with all season electric vehicle tires. Also in India, we have pioneered into coming out tires for our cars in India, for the electric cars and for two wheelers. Okay, so those are the product offerings that we've already done. Also, the last mile delivery in India, we are encouraging people to use electrification. Okay, electric vehicles, because that's where, that's another step on uh, electrifying and using electrification for sustainability. So by 2026, you plan to become a $5 billion company. So what will be your growth focus from here on? Well, uh, there are a lot of growth focuses. India remains as our home ground. Uh, Europe remains as our home ground. We will continue to become leaders in India and go after market share. But one thing I want to say very clearly, the mantra is only profitable growth. So we are looking at uh, uh, 
coming out of products which are giving us negative impact you're looking at distribution channels which may not be profitable so india will continue to grow uh, become volume leaders we are already volume leaders but also profitable leaders in europe we continue to gain market share and especially gain market share in the high end premium segment of the market and so we will keep on entering into new areas in europe and getting into a pre- much more premium position and much more profitable the next biggest growth after that is the us market already we have invested into the us market in in terms of sales and marketing we have introduced both the fredestein brand in uh, car tires and in truck tires we have introduced the apollo brand so right now the whole focus is to grow the market put money behind the brand put money behind the technology in the us and see where it takes us to so there's a lot of emphasis and focus on the us market to try and take us to our 5 billion target in 2026 well, thank you so much for joining us today neeraj thank you so much pleasure with this it's time for us to stop for a short break but you don't go away keep watching gmo media presents india's finest workplaces headquartered in gurugram india the company has a turnover of 2.8 billion us dollars and ranks amongst the leading global tire makers apollo tires has been recognized as the top employer both in asia and europe in the recent past and has won several accolades for its social initiatives like hiv aids awareness and prevention initiatives for the trucking and allied communities We are now joined by the President and Chief Business Officer at Apollo Tires, Mr. Sunam Sarkar. Hi, Sunam. It's so great to have you with us today. How are you? I'm very well, Gitanjali. Thank you for having me on today. It's been it's a pleasure joining you. So, Sunam, why don't you start by telling us about Apollo Tires' growth story? How has it panned out in your professional tenure? You've been with the company for 23 years. Yeah, it's it's been an interesting journey. Uh, I joined when the company was much smaller. Uh, our top line was about 300 odd million dollars today we are more than 2.5 billion dollars uh, so it's obviously grown tremendously in terms of size but i think more importantly in terms of the kind of company we are the kind of culture we have the geographical spread and for me personally it's been a tremendous journey both professionally and personally so sunam it is also said that apollo tires works as one family so what does that imply I think it means uh, it kind of talks about the culture that we are as a company. Uh, it's really the culture of one for all and all for one. We have uh, we are built on very strong family values. We we respect and value each other as colleagues and we are always there for each other. We always treat each other as family. We uh, in in families people make mistakes, people learn, people grow. and that's exactly what we are like we encourage all of our members to keep learning to keep growing well i'm fairly new to the apollo family and my experience so far has been accelerating i'll tell you why i come from a non corporate culture and corporate culture is very new to me but i've been closely guided and mentored by my leaders and they have given me the opportunities to shine again and again and again they have recognized the talent in me that i myself was unaware of and today i am a proud mc for apollo house and i do majority of events in apollo house here people they don't pull you down to succeed they push you up and we all succeed together we are not playing in vacuum here they recognize your talent and we shine start with we are one global multinational and we are working with so many different cultures around the world to bring them all together under one roof and that integration uh is a testimony to the fact that we do operate like one family so it is actually not not a not a workplace for us it is another home for us 
Now, if we talk about the work culture at Polo Tires, it displays transparency at every level. So, share some insights on the same. Uh, I think we pride ourselves as an organization that is built on communication. We believe in the power of communication to energize our people, to get them to understand where the company is headed, what is expected of them, and how they are contributing to the bigger picture. So uh, it's it's uh, it's part of that same one family uh, uh, feeling that I mentioned to you earlier. We also encourage people not to be worried about failure. Until they try something out, they will never know whether it succeeds or not. So we want to remove that fear of failure from people. We want to give them a safe space in which they can work and grow as individuals. Well, it was great to know that, Sunam. Now, if we talk about employees, uh, you have more than 19,000 employees across the world. And Apollo Tires is also known for its people-centric policies. So tell us more about these employee benefit programs at Apollo. So what we do is really focused upon uh, employee centricity. Uh, recently, we launched something called the Employee Self-Service Portal, where the employee has full access to his or her own data information. They can file claims, they can uh, put in reports, everything completely at, at a, the power of a button. Our, our HR teams are constantly updating and refreshing the uh, uh, policies that we have in place to reflect current realities. After all, a policy might have been made a few years ago and that's not really a, a, a current reality. So we keep refreshing uh, uh, all of our policies, all of our processes in, in this manner. Right, and I guess that is why you've been consistently accoladed with great place to work and top employer recognitions. So what are your thoughts on the same? Good reflection for us because it tells us that we are on the right path, we are doing the right kind of things. Uh, we, uh, we set out to achieve certain objectives in terms of uh, allowing our employees to grow, giving them uh, a safe workspace, giving them uh, training, skill building, knowledge sharing, and the certifications really tell us that yes, we are doing something right, and uh, we, we continue on that path. Sometimes they also tell us what we can do better and it's again great learning for us. And Sunam, so greater emphasis has been given to equal opportunities, learning and development. So how does that help an employee? Uh, moreover, how do you manage to keep motivation going on the floor? So one of the biggest success stories has really been the learning and development journey. Uh, we provide employees with a vast array of methodologies. Uh, as you're aware, during the pandemic, face-to-face -face interactions were very difficult. So we had a huge library of online materials available to employees to access. Uh, pleased to say that 14,500 learning hours have been consumed by our employees just in the last one year, which is a tremendous achievement by any organization. It's also about learning and development within the organization where there is a huge ample opportunity. But one thing which is very enriching over here is the culture in the organization. There are diverse teams across various countries and the diversity is what actually makes Apollo what it is today. And at Apollo Ties, you also run a lot of rewards and recognition programs, emphasizing the company's commitment towards its employees and other partners. So tell us more about these programs and activities. There's a series of record, uh, reward and recognition programs that we have. Starting at the very top, there is the Employee of the Year Award, which is really for the best employee across the organization in one year. And that's a single award, which really is the highest accolade that Apollo has. Uh, for people of exceptional achievement during the year. But then we go down the line and we have uh, a roll of honor for about 75 odd employees, which recognizes the work that they've done. We have recognition for cross-functional teamwork. Uh, and I think here I'd like to talk about something which I believe is unique to Apollo, the peer-to-peer -peer recognition program. Everybody across the Apollo world is uh, enabled or uh, able to give recognition to their peers and the recognition could be on various parameters could be uh, the the most inspiring leader it could be uh, for someone who's uh, done a great deal of uh, above and beyond kind of work and it's just a badge that you give to a fellow colleague uh, last year 20000 such badges got exchanged amongst employees the sense of happiness you feel when you're being recognized makes you realize your self worth 
We have this Chairman's Recognition Awards every year and recently when I was nominated for the Role of Honor, one of the finest awards in Apollo Tires, it really gives me the sense of pride being an Apolloite. Also, Sunam, post the pandemic, now that the consumer demand seems to be bouncing back, what are the people hiring plans or growth plans at Apollo facilities all across India? People plans have always remained consistent. We always believe in right skilling. We always believe in taking only the people that we really need and enabling them to do superior performance. That journey will continue. Now, Sunam, let's talk about the new joinees. So, uh, what is that one thing that any new employee joining Apollo Tires should look forward to? Difficult if you ask me for just one thing because we believe there are so many. But uh, if I have to encapsulate it all, I think it's that culture that we offer. The freedom for employees to grow as individuals, for employees to grow and do what they feel that they can contribute to the organization. We really give them a, a, a canvas for them to paint upon. So finally, Sunam, what is your vision for the future of Apollo Tires with respect to workforce hiring or expansion plans? So Apollo has a very aggressive uh, uh, vision for the next five years. Uh, we have a, a vision of reaching uh, $5 billion of top line uh, level. Uh, but interestingly enough, that is built on the platforms, uh, two of which I'd like to talk about, which are sustainability and people. Uh, sustainability, of course, is the challenge for all organizations going forward. But we also believe that it's our contribution, our giving back to the world in, uh, to make it a better place for the next generations. And the people platform is uh, uh, another area that is close to all of our hearts. Uh, we will continue to invest in people, we will continue to grow our people, we will continue to develop our people because we are very clear without people that $5 billion is never going to happen. So that's the fundamental lifeblood of our vision. Well, with that, thank you so much, Sunam, for joining us today and sharing so much about the vision of Apollo Tires. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure having you with us. Today, Apollo Tires is constantly striving to strengthen its market leadership, creating exceptional value for its esteemed customers, investors, and all other stakeholders. People and communities here create a comprehensive work culture and focus on building responsible and sustainable businesses for the well-being of the society. While being one of the leaders in the domestic market, Apollo Tires exports to over 100 countries worldwide. The company continues to increase its focus on new geographies such as North America and in geographies where it has already made some inroads such as in the Asian and the Middle East creating further growth avenues for the future. So this was the story of Apollo Tires, an organization which is an inspiration for all. We'll be back soon with another fascinating story in GMO Media Presents India's Finest Workplaces. Thank you for watching.